welcome to another drone in setup video. This time I'm going to take a quad and take it from just flashed through to configured and ready to do auto tune. This is my uh, ultra budget mini quad and I'm going to warn you right now my motors are non-flyable <laughs> due to a bad crash the other day. So uh, you're going to see them wobbling and making some really bad noises here. Please uh, disregard that. This just happens to be one of the best quads I have on hand for doing a sample setup on right now. So it's the one I'm going to use. I also have a battery handy because we are going to need to spin up our motors during this process. And I have my radio handy because we're going to configure the radio. I do not have props because like I mentioned, we're going to be spinning up the motors. You do not want props on during this. If you have them on, pause, take a minute, take them off, move on. I'm going to say that a few more times during this because I don't want anybody getting hurt. It's important to do this with no props. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to connect up our USB cord. This is a DTFC in here right now. Um, I'm using a PPM receiver because it's what I had on hand for this build. And I'm using KISS 18-amp uh, ESCs, so those are going to be in one-shot 125 mode. And that's the basic setup I'm going to show here. Um, we could go through and use the configuration pane and set this up manually on all these various tabs. Um, and in some cases, you will want to come to hardware and set your receiver up before you run the wizard. Uh, like NAS32, you would want to do that. Most boards, it'll be able to set itself. One catch I know is that the uh, Revo Acro boards that are coming out and are now supported as of this uh, Kyote release, they will default to putting the uh, DSM satellite on the flex port, and you will need to move it to the main port on those boards. That only affects the uh, Acro uh, Revo boards. Most boards are going to be normal, and that's just because those Acro Revo boards aren't really Revo, but they're close enough to run on the Revo software. Okay, so yeah, we could come through here, and we could set up our uh, inputs manually, we could set up our outputs manually, we could set up our vehicle manually, and I will go back and do videos showing how that's done. But for now, we're going to do this the easy way. We're going to come back to the welcome screen, and you'll notice I'm running the basic configuration of GCS, so I'm missing two buttons here, and I have less stuff down here than I normally do. But I figure most people are going to be using basic, so that's what I'll demo with. We're going to go to this vehicle setup wizard. A lot of people don't notice this is a button. It is. So go ahead and click on it. And you're going to get a nice big red warning, remove propellers, just like I said. It's also a good idea to read through here, because it's going to tell you what is and isn't going to be set up. Um, but you'll get an idea from that just watching what's going on here. So no props, we're going to hit next. It's going to confirm what kind of board is connected. This is indeed a DTFC, so I'm going to hit next. Now it's going to go for our input configuration. The default on this board is PPM, which is what I am running, so I don't have to change anything. If you're running PWM, which is grayed out because it's not an option on this board, or uh, SBUS, Spectrum Satellite, or Groppner, you'd click on the button for whichever one you're going to be running. A lot of times after changing this, it will ask you to reboot. You, it'll walk you through that, but basically you'll just disconnect your board, let it power down, wait a few seconds, and then power it back up. That's because changes to the uh, input configure to the hardware configuration require a reboot, and this changes the hardware configuration. But for now, we're going to go next. Select our vehicle type. I'm assuming you're doing a multi-rotor, and that's the default, so just hit next. And you're probably doing a quadcopter in X configuration, so again, you're probably just going to hit next. You're going to choose your ESC type. This is a lot easier than doing it the manual way that I'll demo later um, in another video. The Turbo PWM is for older ESCs, but still Simon K... Uh, and BL Heli, where you've got that 400 hertz refresh rate. For older, uh, slower ESCs, there's no default option, 
and you really don't want to be running those at this point. There's no excuse not to be running Simon K or BL Heli, something that can do at least 400 hertz. One Shot 125 is a noticeable improvement. It's measurable and it does make a difference. Uh, one Shot 42, I'm not as big of a fan of. It doesn't make nearly as big of a difference. And Multi Shot is also possible, but has to be configured manually. And I'm not a fan of Multi Shot or One Shot 42. Um, that's a topic for another video. But basically, for now, we're going with One Shot 125. We're going to go to next. It's going to give us a summary that everything is set up correctly, and we can click here to get a configuration illustration. Um, it's probably hard to see on the camera here because I've got my engraving blocking out the board, but I do indeed have my motors wired in the way that it's showing. If you do not have your motors wired this way, all is not lost. You do not have to break out the solder iron and move them around that can be configured through the GCS and I will do another video and link it in here when it's done showing how you can change that which is actually pretty common if you're running something like a NAS32 where you might be coming from clean flight, beta flight, one of those and their motor mapping is significantly different. So that, that'll be another video and I'll link it in when it's done. For now we're going to close and we're just going to confirm this configuration. Next, it's going to calibrate the sensors. So you just want the quad sitting level. It doesn't, you don't got to break out a level and make sure you're totally level. Just level on a table is good enough. Hit calculate, and this is going to take just a few seconds. It's going to go through there. It's going to uh, get the gyro and the accelerometer configured. It says it's done, so we can go next. Now we're going to do our output, and this is the point where you really, really, really want to make sure you have your propellers off, because we are going to spin the motors. So I'm also going to go ahead and connect a battery up at this point, and we're going to hit next. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the point where our motors spin, and you want to find a point where they're spinning pretty good. You don't want them just barely spinning and kind of stuttering, you want them spinning. So it's going to do motor one first, which is this one, and the worst one on this quad, so it might give me a bit of trouble. You're going to hit start, and what I do is I like to click on the slider, and instead of dragging it, I use my arrow keys to advance it, so I have a little bit finer control. And, wow, look at that motor, how bent that shaft is. There it is. It's spinning, and it's not stuttering or moving, so that's a little iffy right there. So I'm going to go up just one notch and go with that. It's better to go one notch too high than one notch too low. Um, if you go too low on it, then you could have your motors stop when you're doing low throttle maneuvers, like with uh, hang time, where you're going to be hanging with zero throttle for a while. Okay, that motor is actually the best of the four on here. I didn't kill that one in my bad crash. Stop. Next, we're up to the last motor. Hit start. And again, this is, I just don't like sliders much. I don't feel like I have a lot of control on them. I prefer to use the keyboard when I can. That's not because of drone, and that is probably the worst motor. <laughs> um, it's not that drone is bad with its sliders. It's just I don't like sliders. So I use the keyboard. All right, those are configured. We're going to hit next. It's going to offer us to save. We will save. And when it's done, hit next our basic configuration is now complete. So we're going to move on and we're going to set up our inputs using the radio setup wizard. Make sure your radio is on. Mine was off, so I got to turn it on and let it power up here. And we're going to run the wizard. First thing it's going to do is set our arming settings to be always disarmed so that no matter what we do, it can't accidentally power up while we're doing this. You shouldn't have props on here anyway, but a lot of times you're going to have to have the battery on with most boards to power your receiver. So just to be safe, it switches us to always disarmed. It gives a little information about what's going on and some things that may uh, throw you. Those aren't going to come up in this basic configuration, so we're not going to worry about that. And We're just going to go next. We're going to select what mode our radio is in. I'm assuming you're a normal person in fly mode 2. Uh, you may be one of those weird people from certain places that like to fly mode 1. It's 
a valid option. Go ahead and use it if you're so inclined. I'm mode two, selected, hit next. Uh, you're probably always going to be an acro unless you're setting up a helicopter, which I'm not describing today. So make sure you're an acro, not heli, and hit next. Now it's going to show you which stick to move. That was throttle first. Next it's going to go with roll, and I would ju just barely move your stick and it detects it. Pitch. Next will be yaw. There's yaw. Now it's going to go into switches, starting with flight mode. So I'm going to toggle that. It detects it. I broke my switch I normally use for accessory zero, so I'm going to use this other one instead. And because of my broken switch, I don't have an accessory one or accessory two, so I'm just going to hit next on those. And then arming switch, I'm going to flip my arming switch until it detects it. Now it's going to ask me to center all of my controls, which I will do, and hit next. And we're going to move them all through their full range. I try not to rush through this just to make sure that it detects it. I like to go through twice. You shouldn't have to, but I always worry about whether it's going to do it. You may notice at this point your pitch is probably reversed. Almost everybody's pitch is reversed. You're not doing anything wrong. The people who made your radio are, uh, according to some people, technically doing it wrong. But when everybody does it wrong, is it really wrong? Not in my book. But good enough. So it's asked me to move all of my switches. I forgot about my accessory switch. It can tell that I've moved all of them, so I'm going to go to next. At this point, we can correct any reverse channels, most likely pitch, select it, and now it reacts correctly. All my other channels react as expected, so I can hit next. It's not going to check failsafe. Do not skip this. You need failsafe to fly a multi-rotor safely. Uh, it's pretty easy. Turn your radio off, and it should detect it. If it doesn't detect it, find out what's wrong with your radio configuration and fix it. I am now going to turn on my radio, and it will detect that my radio is back up and give me my next button that I can click. Okay, it gives us a final review where we can make sure everything is moving and responding, and it all looks good to me here. I don't even use that accessory switch, but I can figure it anyway. And there we go. Hit next, and finally it's going to set up our arming settings. Uh, it's already set to always disarm because that's what it was doing. I'm going to switch to a switch for arming because I want to set up hang time. And with hang time, you don't want to use stick commands because you could accidentally disarm while you're in the air. Um, it's given me warnings because right now the vehicle will remain armed indefinitely when the receiver is disconnected for three different reasons. Oh dear. Uh, first thing. We have our throttle must be low before arming. That's a good safety feature. I suggest keeping it ticked. Uh, another nice thing about arming with a stick is you can calibrate your gyros every time you arm, which is generally a good idea. You can set it down to 250 milliseconds. I'm not in a rush. I give it the full one second. Um, next is disarming settings. And again, we're disarmed by a switch and Additionally to the switch for disarm, it will be automatically disarmed if the throttle is low for longer than 30 seconds. You can change that, but 30 seconds is pretty good. Or if your receiver is in fail-safe state for longer than whatever you set. I'm going to go with two seconds. Um, note, this is how long it's dis before it's disarmed after it goes into fail-safe. This doesn't say it's going to wait two seconds from a radio drop to go into failsafe. This is saying once it's in failsafe, which will give you hang time, basic, minimal stabilization, it will stay there for two seconds before completely disarming and shutting down the motors. Uh, if you have a really solid radio system, you can probably get by with one second because you're not going to have any dropouts. If you have dropouts and you're worried about them, two seconds is a nice safe buffer here that gives you time to get disarmed in a, an emergency, but will probably not disarm you just because you had a radio glitch. Move this out of my way, and we're going to hit save. Okay, we could probably go fly now, but first I'm going to disconnect this because my ESCs are starting to beep at me. 
we are going to come to our flight modes and we are going to set up our flight modes. I'll do another video showing flight modes and details, but for now we're going to start with leveling and auto tune as the two that we really want. If you have three, go ahead and set leveling on a third one as well. That way you're only going to have leveling and auto tune while you're auto tuning. Um, and we're going to hit save. And notice now we got this red X on our system configuration. If I click on that, it comes up and says error code auto tune. Auto tune flight mode or stabilization mode selected without enabling the module. That means it won't let us fly. Um, <laughs> so we need to enable that module, which we do from the auto tune tab by checking the enable auto tune module box and hitting save. It's going to write that configuration, but that module change won't take effect until we reboot the controller. So I'm going to hit disconnect. I'm going to disconnect my USB cord and I'm going to plug it back in. It will then reconnect and now our system config has gone green. I still have a red battery because this is a DTFC which has a built-in power monitor and if I come to modules battery we can see that is enabled and it is measuring voltage and current and that's why we're getting a battery warning because I don't have battery connected so my battery value is too low. I can plug in a battery and once I plugged in a battery we're all green. We're now ready that we could take this out if I didn't have beat up motors. We could arm it and there it is spinning and we could fly. Um, and that's what we're going to do next. We're not going to do it with this quad because this quad is too beat up to fly right now. But I will take another that I have ready and can auto-tune, and we will do an auto-tune video next showing the basic procedure once you're configured and ready to fly auto-tune, just how to do it. Um, hope this has been helpful. I'm going to keep making these setup videos for Dronin if people like them, so please give me the thumbs up, give me a subscription, and if there's anything in particular that you have questions about or you'd like to see a video uh, showing how to do on Dronin, please comment down below, let me know, and I will try to get to it. I already have a nice long list of uh, topics I want to go over on these videos, but I'm willing to add to that list if people have other things that they want me to do. Hope this helps. Hope you enjoy droning. Uh, have a good time.